Okay, everybody. Uh, I'm going to go back and play a little bit of American Truck Simulator. Um, can't remember now. I do have quite a few mods installed. I don't even know if I'm able to go back and show you, but anyway, it doesn't really matter. Um, maybe from the map, world map, I can show you exactly what sort of mods I have installed. Now, I only own um, the DLCs, like the standard DLCs that come with, uh, like, uh, with the game itself. But I was able to find a version of the mod that supports no DLCs for setting up all these different points across uh, North America to Canada. And I'm stationed in Halifax. I'm actually heading toward uh, Malayne. Um, so, oh shoot, I forgot to do the radio here. I enjoy listening to radio stations. Normally it's Art Bell, uh, Paranormal UK Radio, Sci-Fi Old Time Radio, World War II Freedom Radio, uh, Crime and Suspense, Roswell UFO Radio drama. That's if they're active. Sometimes they're not. Left behind. They don't belong in the past. Here's my knife. Go over there and dig them out. Here's the uh, the movie Mist. Now these are my local, on my local hard drive. And Bob Zarr, no, UFO. No. Absolutely no. Art Bell, Vatican Murders. Uh, Father Martin, welcome back to the program. Good morning, go Alvin. Back. How are you? Uh, I am very well. Uh, better than the news. Um, I want to tackle right away, Father, a couple of yes. breaking uh, kind of news stories. One, uh, I started getting loud. messages yeah. okay. that a an exorcist, one that Actually, you may let's go know. To, let's go to Skinwalker Ranch. Good morning, everybody. Here I am. George Knapp is my guest. He is All fully right. an institution and a legend. I should laugh about that, but I won't, because he really is. Whoa, 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 uh, whoa, whoa. in Las Vegas for as long as I can remember reporting for our CBS affiliate here. Any number of times he has officially for the station looked into Area 51. And an awful lot of what you're hearing tonight. Now, I want to get his comment in a moment on what happens in ufology. And what happens is it eats its young. It's absolutely horrible what goes on. Ufology just sort of <laughs> self-destructs. So Go straight on. We'll find out what George thinks about that and your calls coming right up. George, uh, ufology does more damage to itself than all the chuckling newspaper articles that are ever written. Uh, any comments on that? I uh, can't, can't argue with you there, Art. Ufology is a mess. I mean, it starts with the premise of what the ufologist that anyone can become one just by saying so. You know, and uh, there are a lot of really good people in the field who work for a long time to get to the bottom of this mystery. But they do it in spite of ufology because you got so many crazies that, and uh, zealous religious type astronauts who are firmly convinced they know what the truth is, they know the mind of the aliens, they know where these people I'm come from. I'm going to change that. Uh, you know, if I try to... Desert in the great American Southwest. I bid you all good evening and or good morning wherever you may be across this great land of ours. Out across the state line, all the way to the Caribbean and the U.S. That's not loud enough. Islands, where I'm going to go visit one day, south into South America, north all the way to the pole. This is Coast to Coast AM, worldwide, of course, on the Internet. All right, now, uh, to that portion of the show, Thomas, he does not do frequent interviews. Barely ever does. As a matter of fact, that really goes for both of these uh, gentlemen. I now would like to bring on uh, Mike Rogers and Travis Walton. So let's do it one at a time and be sure we get them uh, planted properly. Uh, first, let's go to uh, Mike Rogers. Mike, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, you hear me okay? Yeah. All right, good. Uh, let's see if we can bring uh, Travis on. Uh, Travis Walton, good evening. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, excellent. We've got you both just fine. Uh, all right. I don't know where to start. I sat down uh, and watched Fire on the Sky again and took notes this time. And uh, so I guess I'll kind of move through it the 
way they did, except I would like to not do it the way they did, with the flashback in the beginning and then the, the story taking out. Uh, Mike, you had a government contract of some kind with the Forest Service? Right. What was that to do? Well, we had to thin out the trees that were damaged and diseased and, and whatnot after a logging operation. Well, I forgot what the key is and for my wipers. Uh, basically, it's just kind of an ecological program that uh, That's for wipers, yeah. cleans up the forest after logging and makes the trees grow better. All right. And you were the crew chief for that? Right. Uh, how big a project was it? How long were you going to be up there? Uh, we'd been on it about a year and a half at that time. P. Oh, yeah. I see. Okay. All right. So it was a pretty good, pretty good sized contract. Exactly. Uh, you were married at the time, Mike. Uh, are you still uh, in a divorce status? Right. I haven't been married now for many years. <laughs> okay. Um, I guess uh, at the time also the movie went into the, the, the thing that you had some financial troubles. Uh, the movie took a few liberties. I wasn't really having financial troubles. I was having troubles trying to live the American dream and have quite as much as I wanted, I guess. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then it covered a little piece where Travis uh, drove up on a motorcycle and wanted to start a motorcycle shop there. Is that right, Travis? Yeah. So you did do that? Well, we had, uh, you know, various businesses that uh, we thought we might get in together, but... You know, the motorcycle thing was more ready to turn right. my idea. I don't know that Mike and I had plans together. So the movie, the movie at least was pretty true in that area. Yeah, I was kind of into motorcycles at the time. Turn All right. right. Scene, I guess. <laughs> scene shifts, and you guys are on the way up to the mountains uh, to do the contract. And on the way up, Travis, you got into kind of a thing, a bit of a friction with, uh, with Alan Dallas. Yeah, well, you know, he was kind of a, a wild guy, and uh, he'd had a little friction with probably several of the guys on the crew mm -hmm. at various times. You guys arrived okay at the work site then, worked all day, left the work site around dark. Was it already dark when you left? Well, not quite dark. It was, it was getting dark. The sun had gone down and it was darkening. Okay. Um, then you, uh, on the way down, I guess, uh, you both saw something, some sort of uh, glow or fire in the sky. It, it, the way the ma movie made it look, I've seen fires at night, and it looked just Turn like a left. fire in the distance, kind of lighting the horizon. Is that about right? Well, we could see up to the trees, and, you know, first we didn't know really what it was. We thought it might be a, a forest fire, but it was more of a, a golden color rather than a red mm -hmm. uh, color. And, and then it apparently moved? Well, um... Did it, I mean, did it look like a fire was spreading, or did it look like just the whole thing was moving? We were just puzzling over a lot of different things. Uh, nobody really talked about it while we were looking at it, because, you know, there wasn't that much time. We saw it, and, you know, I heard the guys kind of one by one fall silent from, you know, the various conversations that were going on. Mm. So I assumed that they were all looking at what I was looking at. But nobody said, like, you know, starting analyzing out loud what it was. Uh, there was more, you know, what was going on inside of our head. If you'd have had to guess, then, would you have said fire or plane crash? Um, well, uh, it was puzzling, you know, because at first I was thinking uh, fire, but then the light seemed to be coming from higher above. You know, I knew the ridge top was just a little bit above us, but this was from higher above that, so... That's the reason the plane crashed. Maybe it was how it's hanging up in a tree or something. Well, I guess we ought to identify exactly where this was. Where was your work site? It was uh, the highest area uh, up on the mountain Dang. rim. I think I hit uh, the wrong key. Forested, uh, Come on. Get it going. Come on. Uh, Arizona. Mm -hmm. And so you were uh, at about what altitude, do you think? Oh, I don't know. What do you think, Mike? 7,500 feet. 75 at all. You were way up there then. All right. Um, then in the movie, uh, as they always do in movies of this kind, this, you know, the radio started to go crazy. Is that also accurate? Well, um, we didn't have a radio uh, on time. <laughs> uh, so that's a little dramatic license they took then. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, at any rate, um, you 
guys head toward this, or did you just keep going down the road and that took you closer to the line? Yeah, that's where it was. See, there was just no other way out of there, and uh, we had no choice but to keep going the direction we were going. All right, and somebody yelled to stop the car. Was that you, Travis? Um, yeah. Yeah, I guess it was me. Um, as soon as we got around this, this uh, group of trees in the thicket, uh, to where we could see the source of this, somebody in the back yelled out, it's a spaceship, or something like that. And, uh, I mean, it was unmistakable. It was so close that, you know, I mean, everybody knew what it was right off the bat. Nobody needed to say what it was. Okay, in the movie, and again, it's, you know, I'll, I'll tell you what the movie did, or I'm sure you know what the movie did. They showed it to be a craft, but... Uh, then at other times, they showed it to be sort of a living light, almost. It, it, did they get that right, or how would you describe what you saw? What, what we saw was um, a, a very distinct uh, as a mechanical object with, you know, hard, angular... Get ready to turn right. It, it didn't have the shape that they gave it in, in the movie. Now, the guys described it as looking to be the color of molten turn metal right. coming out of a blast front. But, you know, they're talking about white hot, golden hot, you know? Sure. So, you know, they had gave the craft in the movie a kind of a molten red, flowy sort of look that, that wasn't really the way it was. How, how, if you had to judge, or either one of you who saw it, how far above ground was it? If you were going to guess. Oh, uh, I don't know, 20 feet. Uh, 20 feet? Oh, that's not far. In other words, it was way down below the tree line. Yeah. So that's close. That's that's close and kind of all right. Then the movie, Travis, shows you getting out of the truck. Is that right? Uh, yeah. Um, I was thinking that this thing was just going to zip off and be gone. <laughs> you know, the way it is when you catch sight of a yeah. wild animal in the woods, you know, you're just going to glitch it and it's going to be gone. And so I was in a hurry to get up to it before it left. Uh, uh, <laughs> but, uh, here's why I gotta stop you for a second, Travis. You know, in the horror movies, when inevitably the lady, uh, you hear this noise, this horrible noise, and inevitably she goes to one place she shouldn't go down to the basement where something eats her. <laughs> so, in other words, here you are with a pretty frightening thing going on a ship hovering, what, 20 feet above the ground or something, and you get out of the truck and go under it? It's kind of a crazy impulse. <laughs> when you think back on it now, do, can you remember what you were thinking when you did that? Well, I was kind of uh, given to impulsive behavior back in those days. Uh, <laughs> it certainly, you know, changed me, and I'm not that way anymore. But, you know, at the time, I was just thinking that, you know, it'd be gone, and I'd miss Get a ready chance to, to right. close. Plus, you know, the guys were really alarmed by what I was doing, and... They were yelling at you to come back to the truck. Yeah, they were, uh, you know, and getting pretty excited Turned about right. that. So, you know, that kind of egged me on. So, oh, but I, I was having serious misgivings because as I got closer to it, it didn't take off. I understand. Uh, was there any noise? Yeah, um, it was a very strange sort of a sound, a kind of a high-pitched, cyclic sound with some real deep tones that just, you know, seemed to be so deep you could almost couldn't heal it. Would, would you would you describe it would you describe it as real loud or just there? Well it was just there. It wasn't tremendously loud at first, but then that when I got closer and Go it, straight it suddenly on. got louder and it started to move. And it rose up a little bit and that really scared me. And uh, they're still yelling at you. Uh, Mike, I'm sure you're still yelling at him from the truck, right? Oh yeah. Uh, did you, are you, is your recollection on. of it, Mike, um, like his regarding the craft itself and the noise? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, in fact, uh, there's, there's little difference, if any, between all the guys that were there in the descriptions of everything. Turn right. It, from its distance, to its size, to its look, and, and the sound that it was giving off. Okay, at this point, there's, what, six of you in the truck? There's that, well, six in the truck, yeah. Six in the um, truck and Travis turn left. out there under the cramp. Um, so there's Travis under the cramp. How much time went by, Travis, before you arrived at your destination? Uh, before your, your memory either finished. ends or th that 
bolt of light hit you. Wait a second, because it's All right, thank you, everybody, uh, for sticking with me as I got to my, my destination. Don't know where I'm going to go and, next, uh, but resolved. if I had the time, I'll just record it. Sorry, I'm in a hurry now, Skip. As soon as I raised up to go, wham. That's when there we go. Just at the very moment, common sense overtook you. Of course, excellent, <laughs> as always. Now, Take care, everybody, movie, and have a good one. It shows